Hey everybody! And a warm welcome to a new story. Today's story is called My Ex-Wife Learned the Hard Way to Not Ignore a Court Summons From the Pro Revenge subreddit I hope you like it and will enjoy the time. If you like my content and this kind of videos, please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. As always this story is told from the OP's point of view. Enjoy it. A bit of background. I was married to a woman for 15 years and ended up divorcing her because she liked to sleep with other guys. While it took me six years to stumble on to this fact, she worked from home, I commuted two hours each way into the city, I owe it to her being either a sociopath or a narcissist, or both, why not? She could absolutely turn on and off the charm and could come up with lies staring you right in the eyes. Hindsight as 2020. Let's call her V, short for Voldemort, as one time when I was talking about her after the separation, I referred to her as she who must not be named and the nickname stuck with all my friends and family. During the marriage, my ex and I were best friends with another couple, and for this post we'll call them Sam and Marie. Sam was, still as, my best friend. Marie was V's best friend. Marie had found about V's plans to cheat on me prior to me finding out and told V that she couldn't condone infidelity and their friendship would end if V did cheat on me. No, Marie did not tell me, and I don't blame her for not doing so. When I finally found out V was having a Facebook affair, if you're going to have an online affair, don't do it while married to a computer expert with some dude in CA. We lived in MA, it was just two weeks before V was flying him out and putting him up in a hotel for three days. I spent those two weeks getting a lawyer, a pie and my exit strategy together. I left her the weekend after their hotel stay, she would spend the days with him and come home for the afternoon, evening without a shred of guilt showing in her actions. The pie having gotten pics and video of them leaving the hotel and eating lunch together and heading back to the hotel. I first stayed at Sam and Marie's in their in-law basement apartment, eventually moving to a small apartment back in the town where V lived. Fast forward 9 months and I'm divorced from V, why it was so short to divorce is another tale worthy of this subreddit. We had one daughter, let's call her Rebecca, she was 13 at the time, between us still at home and we're trying shared custody and live about one quarter mile apart. There are other kids from the marriage, but they were living apart from us at that time and don't play a part in this part of the whole story. We had acquired a lake house during the marriage and had it listed to sell. And we had it written into the divorce agreement to split the proceeds. But paying half the mortgage on that and the rent on my apartment was really stretching me thin financially. One day Marie emails me, subject line in all caps, V just tried to get me fired. Long story short, V emailed Marie's boss claiming that Marie was gossiping about V on sales calls to customers, but her boss knew it was BS and told V as much. Wisely, Marie didn't mess around waiting to see what was next. She went to the local courthouse that day and filed for an anti-harassment order against V. It took several visits to the judge, as V chose to ignore multiple summons to court so that the judge could hear her side of the story. Eventually the judge granted the order because V never showed up to court. During this time, V called 911 on me multiple times, one time claiming I put a letter bomb in her mailbox, and two other times I had entered her apartment without her permission. The letter bomb accusation was due to me posting a link to shipyourenemiesglitter.com on Facebook months before, and subsequently mailing her a thick bundle of forms to sign. Police were called and I had to go to V's apartment and open the letter in front of the police. Needless to say, there was no glitter, let alone a bomb. 
Oddly enough, this accusation came just days after there had been an actual bomb threat called into the town hall. Funny that. The two times I had gone into her apartment had both been to drop off Rebecca's book bag when she had forgotten it at my apartment. Both times I had texts from V granting me permission to open the door and put the book bag just inside. She would then text me after I had done so, trying to revoke permission. To this day, I think V thinks that if she deletes a message on her end, the message is deleted on my end. Even though kids will be kids and Rebecca did forget her book bag at my place on at least one other subsequent occasion, I did not fall for V's ruse a third time. All forgotten book bags were delivered by Rebecca and I meeting halfway between the apartments. Also included with the multiple 911 calls were multiple minor child wellness checks on evenings when I had Rebecca at my apartment. It's so much fun having to explain to your child why the police are showing up at 8 o'clock at night to check to see if she is okay. Basically, V was trying to get me frustrated and react badly. Throughout this whole mess, Sam and Marie have been lifesavers to me and Rebecca. Hosting and cooking weekly family dinners for us, they are Rebecca's godparents and just being absolute rock steady in their support and tolerance of the situation. Around this time, V filed for sole custody. At the strong urging of my lawyer, I insisted on a guardian ad litem, gal, being appointed to represent Rebecca's best interests. Her being a minor child. Of course, the parents must pay the fees of the gal. At this point, my finances are really getting worrisome, so I write an email to V saying we need to drop the price of the lake house and get that sold regardless of profit. I needed that albatross off from around my neck so I could continue to afford to live where I could co-parent Rebecca as well as fight the custody battle. So there I am, going deeper into debt, can't pay rent and mortgage long term and V is starting another court battle for full custody. With no other choice, I move back in with Sam and Marie so I can continue to pay my lawyer and keep fighting. About a week after I'm settled back in with Sam and Marie, I hear from Rebecca that V's glass patio table was smashed the previous night. I was in NH that evening with witnesses, so it couldn't have been me. I was paying for Rebecca's cell phone and we have Life 360, so we could know where each other was at any time. Due to an earlier threat by V to take the two youngest kids and move to CA to be with the idiot from Facebook. Plus it had history, so I could at least prove my phone was in NH. Rebecca says she knows I was in NH and tells me she'll tell her mother it wasn't me. The next day I was served with a restraining order RO, claiming that I had vandalized V's patio furniture and that she still felt afraid due the letter bomb incident. The cops knew it was bullshit, but the judge had no knowledge of the incident when V filed the RO and had to take her at her word. The RO was for 10 days and then I could show up in court and contest it being continued. The officer who served the RO explained that he had to confiscate any firearms and licenses. While I did have a recently acquired Class A concealed carry license actually from a couple's firearms course that was an anniversary gift from V the previous year. I hadn't any firearms other than a BB gun of Rebecca's. The officer left with just the Class A license, smiling as he said he was pretty sure I wasn't going to go on a rampage with a BB gun. The first thing I did the next day was to go to the police station and request all incident reports that involved me since I left her. I knew of seven incidents, but the desk sergeant informed me they had 19 incident reports from V. He talked to me a bit, clearly trying to get a feel for what kind of person I was, and just what was going on. We parted company with him assuring me that the patrol officers would now know what was going on, and the PD would do right by me so long I kept my cool. Fair enough. 
Two nights before the court appearance to contest the RO, Sam, Marie and I are sitting on their porch, drinking some beer and brainstorming about what I'm going to say to the judge. I'm a bit discouraged because I know it's going to be a he said, she said situation, and I'm living in Massachusetts. If your chromosomes don't match, you are a second-class citizen when it comes to parental rights in MA. Plus, B deserves an Oscar for how well she plays the victim. It wasn't looking good. My only hope was if B decided the RO itself was enough to make me look bad to the gal and not show up and let the RO expire. Marie suddenly said, hey, let me see the RO. I handed it over to her. Hey, this is my judge. She's the judge that granted me the anti-harassment order against V. You're kidding. Sam and I looked at each other in amazement. I swear it is. Let me go get it. Marie goes inside and comes back a few minutes later with her court order. Sure enough, it's the same judge. My grin felt like it was going to split my lips. Now I knew exactly what to do. Now for the meat of the story. The court date to contest the RO arrived and I'm their first thing, just me. No lawyer, because he had to appear in court elsewhere. I strongly hoped that B wouldn't show up, but she did, with someone other than her divorce lawyer and before court was in session her new lawyer approached me and offered to let the no contact order lapse but wanted a do not abuse order left in place. I politely declined her offer, stating I had done nothing to warrant either order and I that I wanted the judge to hear my argument. B's lawyer was taken aback by this a bit and then shrugged as if to say, it's your funeral, and walked back to where V was sitting. We went in front of the judge and V told her side of the story and I started telling mine, introducing all the incident reports from the police department, but V and her lawyer didn't have copies of all of them, so the judge sent us back to the gallery to await second call while V and her lawyer reviewed the reports. When we were called back, the judge started to go into the content of the police reports and I stated that the content was almost irrelevant, but she insisted on going through them. During that V emphasized the two incidents where I briefly entered V's apartment with her permission, but she characterized them as me doing so without her permission. I said that if necessary, I would be able to provide the communications where she gave me permission, but I didn't have them with me today. When going through the first police report from the night I found out about the online affair, wherein V claimed I had brain lesions, V also tried to characterize me as having multiple personality disorder as told to her by our shared primary care physician. The judge asked her with no little incredulity, his doctor told you this without his permission? Yes, your honor. The judge looked at me, puzzled. I shrugged and said while slowly shaking my head in disbelief, I have a very close relationship with my doctor, and I highly doubt he would violate HIPAA. She looked a little nonplussed, but I think she got the message that V wasn't being entirely truthful. As that was the last police report to go, I reminded her that my point wasn't the content, but that I thought V was using the courts to harass and intimidate me and to make me look bad to the gal, and I brought up that this isn't out of character for V as she has an anti-harassment order in place against her, put there by your honor, your honor. Asterisk the judge blinked at that bit of info. I gave her the details and reminded her that V declined to show up at the multiple hearings. As I recounted the particulars of Marie's story, the judge squinted her eyes more and more and her frown got deeper and deeper. She turned to V and her voice was slow cold fury. Do you have an anti-harassment order in place against you? V's voice was so small and weak. Yes, your honor. I so wanted to look at V's face to see her reaction, but I kept my eyes locked on the judge. The judge pointed at V. Why didn't you show up to the hearings? 
a pause as V struggled to find some excuse. Because I didn't want to associate with that, but the judge waved her to silence. I think that was the turning point, as I think she was going to grant their request for the do not abuse, but she turned to me and said sternly, I think there is a bit of this going on on both sides, but clearly she wants you to stay out of her apartment. Never again, your honor. Restraining order terminated, and with a bang of her gavel, we were done. Because the RO was terminated, legally that meant it never happened. I got my class a concealed carry license back the next day and ultimately won the custody battle, a large part of which was the termination of the RO, but also due to V's subsequent increasingly poor emotional and verbal treatment of Rebecca. What do you think about this story? Tell me your thought in the comments. If you liked the story and the content, please leave a like, subscribe and share this video. Also have a look into my playlist for more entertaining stories.